Hi everybody, um, today we're going to use this video to explore some ways of using text-to-speech in OSX to read foreign languages for us. Now commonly text-to-speech is used as an accessibility feature for students with uh, special learning needs. Um, typically this uh, feature is used um, uh, for students who have reading disabilities um, where they can highlight text and have uh, OSX read the text to them so that they can follow along and make sure that they understand uh, all the words and um, the correct syntax of uh, the, the passages that they need to understand for their learning. Now, we're going to uh, manipulate text-to-speech a little bit by changing the system voice and then using it to read uh, some excerpts in Spanish. Now, for teachers uh, who are, are uh, teaching foreign languages, this is a really great way to uh, create extra resources, um, audio resources, where you may not have them from your textbook, you may not have them um, from your, um, your audio library, etc. And so uh, what we're going to do is use uh, text-to-speech to, to uh, read to us excerpts of Don Quixote, and we're going to do it with a Spanish-speaking voice. Uh, so that we get the proper inflection and the proper pronunciation. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to select our system preferences from the Apple menu. And we're going to play with a couple settings in the dictation and speech uh, menu here. When you first open that, you're probably going to be in the dictation area. We're not going to change anything here because dictation is the feature that picks up your voice and then translates it to text. But what we want to play with is the text to speech tab. You'll see that my system voice is currently set as a Spanish speaker from Mexico. Uh, his name is Juan. But for most of you, the default there is going to be Alex. And so let's play a short sample of Alex's voice. Most people recognize me by my voice. If we wanted to change to a Spanish-speaking voice, uh, you're going to need to change to the Customize menu here. Um, we have a dozen, uh, I mean, really a dozen different ways to use uh, an English-speaking voice, but we also have a number of uh, foreign language options here. Uh, we even have Polish and Portuguese. Um, as I search for Spanish, you'll notice that I have uh, the different dialects of Spanish, uh, Argentinian Spanish, Colombian Spanish, uh, Spanish spoken in Mexico, and then in Spain. I have a couple of those voices already installed. You'll notice also for French that we have um, some different uh, voices uh, in French from both Canada as well as France. And then in Chinese, uh, we have a couple of options here as well. Now, um, as far as adding these voices, you're going to need to be connected to the internet to do this. So this is something that if you're using this in school, you're going to want to give kids time to do while they're connected to the internet at school on their MacBooks. And that is uh, what they'll need to do is they'll need to select the Spanish voice that they want to use. Uh, so uh, let's add uh, Monica. We'll play a short sample here. Hola. Me llamo Monica y soy una voz española. And uh, you'll, you'll hear a couple uh, different pronunciation differences between uh, Monica. And then uh, let's try um, Angelica. Hola, me llamo Angelica y soy una voz mexicana. And so the different, um, the different dialects become a little bit more clear um, when you just play those samples. So um, I'm going to install Monica. I've already got Juan and Jorge set up. What you'll see on the next screen here is um, Monica is uh, installing and uh, or is already installed actually. Typically what you'll see is a progress bar underneath here showing uh, how fast um, the download is going. So when we switch to uh, Juan, I want to play a sample Hola, here. Me llamo Juan y soy una voz mexicana. You'll hear uh, Juan's voice, but I also want to point out that you can speed him up. Hola, me llamo Juan y soy una voz mexicana. 
and we can also slow it down. And this is a really key feature for students who need a little bit extra time picking up uh, the individual words um, within a sentence. Hola, me llamo Juan y soy una voz mexicana. Often I remember uh, when I was taking my foreign language classes um, that I would ask my teacher to slow down just so that I could make sure that I've got um, all the words that uh, he or she was speaking. So students can manipulate this. Teachers can also manipulate this. Now this setting change from Alex to Juan will not go into effect until um, I click the back button here. The feature that um, I want to play with, I want to show you just the difference in um, how it behaves. First, I'm going to select Alex. I'm going to click on back. And then I'm going to switch over to Project Gutenberg, uh, which is at gutenberg.org. Uh, they provide a number of uh, free um, literature pieces. Um, these are pieces that are uh, now outside of the dates for copyright protection. And so uh, people have put up translations of different texts from around the world, um, but also put up free uh, versions of the ebooks as well. So I'm going to use a Spanish version of Don Quixote here. So I'm going to take a look at this in HTML. And the reason that I do that is I need to be able to highlight the text. Um, in Safari here in order to get it to speak. So let me give you just a quick example. Remember I chose Alex um, as my setting. I'm going to select some text here and I'm going to have Alex read it to you. So as I right click what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell um, it to start speaking. So I highlighted text, I right clicked on the text, and then I selected the speech menu. And I'm going to start speaking with Alex's voice here. Capitulo the second. Que trade de la primera salada que de su tierra hizo el ingenioso Don Quixote. Now, this is kind of funny, um, I would suspect, for some uh, Spanish teachers, because, of course, uh, this is the way that uh, perhaps some of our students uh, uh, gradually try to use their English in order to speak Spanish. But let's use an actual Spanish speaker's voice. I'm going to go back to dictation and speech. And uh, let's switch to Juan's voice. And remember, I need to click the back button to change that. And then I'm going to go back to Safari. I've highlighted the text. I'm going to right click, use the speech command to start speaking. Capitulo y que trata de la primera salida que de su tierra hizo el ingenioso Don Quijote. You'll notice that there are a couple issues um, with uh, the language, and this is, of course, um, things to just get to know and watch out for and listen for as you use this um, text-to-speech command, and that is uh, that it did not necessarily translate the two I's here um, as uh, chapter 2. So just watch out for those small things and always be sure to listen to it before you have uh, your students uh, use this feature. But let's try now with um, a full uh, sentence. I'm going to highlight the first two sentences here. I'm going to right click, highlight speech, and start speaking those with Juan's voice. Hechas, pues, estas prevenciones. No quiso aguardar más tiempo a poner en efecto su pensamiento, apretándole a ello la falta que él pensaba que hacía en el mundo su tardanza, según eran los agravios que pensaba deshacer, puertos que enderezar, sin razones que enmendar, y abusos que mejorar y deudas que satisfacer. So we actually start getting more natural inflection, and uh, to give Apple some credit here, they have a pretty good uh, syntax. Um, the pacing is pretty clear. Um, most of the words, um, except for a couple different um, perhaps spelling issues, of course anything that's misspelled is going to be mispronounced. Um, but watch out for those small things, but otherwise it's pretty good. It's pretty natural. It's about as natural of a voice as you can get uh, for a computer reading something. Now. Uh, the other thing that is really useful for this, and um, that's uh, actually taking these small text snippets and turning them into MP3s. So let's take a look at how that works. Um, first, up in Safari, uh, you'll notice that under the Services menu, I have an option to take this text and add it to iTunes as a spoken track. 
Now, this feature really only works in the Apple environment. So you will see this in Safari, you'll see it in Pages and Keynote, um, and even Numbers. But where you won't see it is necessarily in Firefox or if you use Chrome. And especially you won't see it in Microsoft Word or PowerPoint or Excel. Um, and that's just because this is using a, a system um, service that really can only be accessed through uh, certain Apple apps. Now this will work in preview, so if you have a PDF of text and you can actually highlight it, that's the big defining difference. If the text can be highlighted, you'll also see this under services as well. So what happens is um, when I have Safari services and I click on add to iTunes as a spoken track, what's going to happen is it's going to ask me which system voice I want to play it in. I need to make sure that I choose Juan. I'm going to. Yes, and it did me to have a computer that will talk to you. What uh, you'll hear is a sample of Juan's voice, just so that you can make sure that uh, you selected the right one. It'll ask you how you want to save as. So what I'm going to change this to is I'm going to actually put in Don Quixote excerpt and I can choose where it goes. Now this is a little bit deceiving because uh, depending on your iTunes settings it may uh, save to the desktop initially and then immediately import it into your iTunes library. So it'll be there for just a second and um, then it'll go directly in your iTunes library. Not to fear though once it's in your iTunes library, we can copy it, move it out, so that you can upload it or uh, attach it to Edmodo posts, to email, to your website. So I'm going to just select desktop for now, and you'll actually uh, see that once I click continue, it will very briefly appear on my desktop, and then it will jump over uh, to iTunes. <laughs> That little dinging sound says that it, the uh, spoken track is complete. So I'll check iTunes. And as I look, here is my Don Quixote excerpt. Hechas, pues, estas prevenciones. No quiso aguardar más tiempo a poner en feto su pensamiento, apretándole a ello la falta que él pensaba que hacía en el mundo su... So uh, once I have this file in iTunes, like I said, I can move it to another location in Finder. So uh, let's say that I want to keep um, all of my excerpts in my documents folder. I have a Finder window open here. I've got iTunes open here. And I will simply drag uh, this file, highlight it, drag it, and then I can drag and make a copy of it in my documents folder or in other folders if you have uh, unit folders. Um, set up. So this M4A file, this is a pretty universal standard. Um, I can attach this, like I said, to Edmodo and have uh, students play it from Edmodo. I can also use this to create audio tracks that are added um, or, or played from uh, pages or keynote documents. So um, this uh, this file is, is pretty um, easily used in multiple applications. Um, but also keep in mind that, you know, students can use this as well. For example, if they were to uh, write out a speech and um, have a draft of that speech, in order to make sure that they're pronouncing words appropriately, um, they can highlight that text, create a track that they listen to a couple times, and then they can mimic that um, without necessarily having a native speaker uh, such as the teacher um, or you know another native speaker right next to them helping them through that. So this is a really great way uh, for students to write an original work, um, make sure that of course they need to make sure that any of the spelling and punctuation is correct so that it pronounces things correctly. Um, but they can then create this uh, practice track that they listen to and repeat and make sure that they have some of the pronunciation uh, correct. So this is a really great way to create custom content um, either for assessments or for student practice. Um, just as a quick review, remember that um, under your system preferences 
you need to have um, the appropriate system voice selected. Um, sometimes you'll have to download those, so do watch out for that. You can select more under the Customize menu. You can select the speaking rate. You'll need to use the Back button to save that setting. And then also remember that you need to have highlightable text. So this won't necessarily work uh, for images or for PDFs that don't um, have highlightable text. To play it very quickly, remember you just select the part that you want to play. You right click, highlight over speech and tell it to start speaking. You can of course tell it to stop if you have too much text. Um, playing or that you need a pause or a break and uh, that's pretty pretty much a wrap folks so if uh, you feel like uh, this is useful or has other applications please uh, let me know I can create uh, more screencasts to help you use OSX's text-to-voice feature in your foreign language classes